This ceremony for the Third Temple has just happened. Video with an update on the Third Temple. It is important to bring this up right now because it pertains to the reenactment of the water libation that took place on October 12, 2022, in order to prepare the Third Temple. Sukkot, also known as the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, or the Feast of Shelters, is currently being observed. This is a holiday celebrated by Jews. This was the seventh and final feast that the Lord commanded Israel to observe, and it was also one of the three feasts during which they were instructed to go and appear before the Lord, your God, at the location that he would select. Hey guys, welcome back to Rapture Revealed. In today's video, we are going to talk about the ceremony for the Third Temple. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. And before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell symbol so you don't miss out on any of our wonderful videos in the future. And let's get started. A third place of worship? Many people are interested in finding out what the Bible has to say about the possibility of there being a third temple because it played such an important role in the history of the ancient Israelites and especially of the Jews who are also Israelites. There are three scriptural indications that point to the existence of another temple despite the fact that the biblical texts are not always as explicit as we would like them to be. The first two of these depict a physical temple while the third is merely symbolic. The fact that the Feast of the Tabernacles was mentioned in the Bible so frequently as a way to draw attention to other significant occurrences is one reason why it's so significant. First Kings chapter 8 verse 2, and it was also during the Feast of Tabernacles that the Israelites who had returned to rebuild the temple gathered to celebrate under Joshua's leadership and to Rubabal. In Ezra 3, and there are many other instances of many events that went on in Scripture during the Feast of Tabernacles, but I'm going to read this article from 365 News about the reenactment of the water libation held to prepare for the Third Temple. If you would like to read it for yourself, I'll make sure to leave a link to it in the description. It says, Victory will flow into your veins as you drink from the fountains of joy. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3. On Tuesday in Jerusalem, a full-dress reenactment of the water libation as it was performed in the temple was held with several hundred participants led by Koenim and priestly guards accompanied by Levites playing musical instruments. This event was a recreation of how the water libation was performed in the temple. The ceremony started at Shar Hashbat, which is located in the Dungit of the old city of Jerusalem. There, the participants joined the priest in wearing the biblically mandated vestments, and Levi fought with musical instruments while wearing special vestments as well. The ritual was held by musically talented Levites who played joyful music on drums, violin, guitar, and clarinet as they wound their way down ancient walkways into the valley below the Temple Mount. The crowd cheered and danced as they made their way through the archaeological ruins of the ancient city of David, an Arab village, and finally to the Siloam Spring, which was utilized during the time of the temple. The procession was broken up by stops at which time trumpets made of pure silver and measuring four feet in length were played. In addition to quite a few other rabbis, Rabbi Israel Ariel, who is known for establishing the Temple Institute, served as the event's overseer. On the website, you'll find a list that you can read. The golden container, which served as the water jug at the pool, was placed at the front of the parade. After the jug had been filled, the procession made its way back up the peak of the mountain, where a miniature version of the altar and its associated implements had been erected in an open space close to the western wall. The ceremony culminated in the priestly blessing, and after that, the once every seven years Hakal ceremony was held. The altar was decorated with large leafy willow branches, just as it was done in the temple. Before we move further to the holiday of Sukkot, I just want to let you know, guys, that we are building a strong community where we give you every single update here. So, if you want to be a part of this family of Rapture Revealed, then please do hit the subscribe button. And now, let's get back to our topic. The holiday of Sukkot is one that is marked by merriment, and the offering of water at the temple served as a celebration's focal point. The ceremony would last for 15 hours, and the celebrations that accompanied it would last throughout the night and into the next morning before the temple service resumed. During the final six days of the week-long Sukkot holiday, during the morning service on the final six days, a libation of water was made in conjunction with the pouring out of wine. After that, the two priests climbed the stone altar in the temple courtyard and made their way to the Saka Spring at the foot of Mount Moriah. There, they filled the flask with three logs of spring water, which is equivalent to approximately two pints, and then returned to the temple. The waters of Gihon Spring, which are carried there by the Salam Tunnel, 
also known as Hezekiah's Tunnel, and sometimes referred to in the Bible as the Lower Pool, were built during the reign of Hezekiah from 715 to 687 BC to replace an older Canaanite tunnel, known biblically as the Upper Pool, that was vulnerable to attackers. Because the new pool of Taudal, the besieging armies no longer had access to the water from the spring. Archaeologists are of the opinion that during the time of the Second Temple, water continued to flow south and collected in an additional larger pool. The swimming hole was initially uncovered in the summer of 2004, and new portions of it are still turning up every day. It's important to keep in mind that the year following the Shemitah is considered to be a spacious year for the arrival of the Messiah. The following verse from Amos is found in both the Babylonian Talmud and the 10th Tactate of Sanhedrin 97a. On the day I will rise up the booth Sukkah of David, which has fallen. Amos chapter 9 verse 11. The teachings of our rabbis revolved around a seven-year cycle, at the conclusion of which the son of David would emerge in the first year. This verse will be fulfilled on Rosh Hashanah, which occurred two weeks ago. The sabbatical year, known as Shimata, has come to an end. Therefore, it's fascinating to observe their gaze. They are looking and they are seeing. Oh, it would seem that the time of the Messiah is drawing near, according to the traditions found in the Talmud, and of course, as I've been covering in a lot of detail recently, they are really pushing for this third temple to be built. They have the expectation that people from other nations will settle there, and as we can see, this is exactly what they are working toward and what they are trying to achieve. Significance of a third temple for us it remains to be seen whether the Jews will construct another physical temple prior to the return of Jesus Christ, despite the fact that the construction of the spiritual temple that Paul spoke of is already underway, and despite the fact that a physical temple will exist during the millennium. Being a part of God's spiritual temple is by far the most important thing that we can do with our time, and it's also the most important thing that we can do for ourselves. And that's going to bring us to the end of today's video, friends. Feel free to let us know what you think about it. Please make sure you leave comments down below, let us know your thoughts, and let us know if you feel like you're ready for the rapture, and are you looking forward to it? If you like this video, we would please like for you to like it and share it with all your friends and family, and other Christ followers in your inner circle with whom you would like to share our message. We would also like you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you get more great messages just like this one, and you can also check out other videos we have that have been specially selected just for you. If we can ask you one more favor, friends, before we part, please make sure you hit the bell icon, and that will let you be notified immediately of our latest uploads and updates to our channel. You will always be the first to know when we have a new video for you. We sincerely appreciate you spending time out of your busy day to hang out with us today, and we look forward to doing it again sometime soon. Have a great rest of your day, everybody, and thank you for watching, and be blessed.